The Rocky Road Tour started in my own backyard at Raccoon Creek State Park with the Ohio PA Tabs, Tags, and Friends. It's a lovely state park situated very close to the Greater Pittsburgh International Airport and directly in the approach path for arriving traffic. I left PA to spend the week in the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Cleveland, Ohio, but more importantly with family before finally venturing off into the Wild West. After spending the week in Cleveland, on Friday after work, I drove to Elkhart, Indiana, where I spent the night overnight parking at Cracker Barrel. I drove to West Omaha, Nebraska on Saturday to spend the night at a KOA and take advantage of the shore power so that I could run air conditioning. On Sunday, I drove through Nebraska and Colorado until I pulled into my campsite at Laverne Johnson Park in Lyons on Sunday afternoon. So the Rocky Road Show has landed in Colorado and I am with my friend Gina. Hi. Gina is the brand new owner of this beautiful clamshell behind us called Sweet Mama. And it's a 2021 Tab 320 clamshell. She drove it out from Colorado or from Ohio last week. Gina and I met here in Lyons, Colorado and have spent a couple days acclimating and Gina visiting family. And today we're actually going to head on out. We're moving to a new location and I'll share that with you after we've been there. But I got to tell you, this campground is awesome. In some ways, it's like a parking lot, like a lot of municipal campgrounds are. But it's surrounded by these beautiful red cliffs. There is the creek that runs right through the campground and actually surrounds the park on three sides. And the the campground facilities have been recently redone due to flooding in 2013, and it's a great site. You can probably hear Rocky. He's behind me. I'll show you Rocky now. So in case you were concerned, Rocky's right there waiting for the next destination. Say hi, Rocky. So Gina and I are getting ready to hopefully find a boondocking spot, and we've been talking about some ways to make sure that we're extending our water capacity. You know, these tabs have 18 gallon freshwater capacities so we're pretty excited that the tank is bigger than the old tabs. This, yes. Gina and I are both actually second time tab owners so we were, we've watched the tab evolve over the years and uh, first we're going to have to find a spot. Now we've narrowed it down to a couple communities and I found those when I was boondocking in 2016 looking for a place to work and we're going to go back to that area because the fall foliage is awesome. Um, when we get there, we're going to look for a spot where there's enough flatness for Gina because she doesn't have a boondock, so we want to make sure there's enough clearance. And I've got some spots that I know from previous visits, but I use the Campendian app to find them initially, and that's how I found these spots. So these spots do have good cell phone service, which wasn't a requirement, but it's a bonus. Yes. We won't lie. Um, and we're looking forward to just seeing the foliage at higher elevations. A few tips for water conservation if you're boondocking. I carry a really nice spray bottle that I'll use for washing dishes, washing hands, um, rinsing off my toothbrush, and try to save the water in the freshwater tank primarily for doing dishes um, that I can't use just the spray bottle for, 
or for taking showers. We've actually brought some additional bottled water that we refilled here at the campground, and we're gonna use that to hopefully flush the toilet with. So those things should help our water supply last. There are a few dump stations and other places to refill fresh water in the area where we're going. So I'm not too concerned. We're, we're not gonna be too far from civilization. There's a hardware store in town and a grocery store. So we should be okay. So Gina, tell me, are you excited to try boondocking? I'm very excited. I've only stayed without hookups maybe for a couple of nights and, and never in such remote areas. So I'm very excited, a little nervous, but I'm already learning a lot from Jen. We're really looking forward to it. I love to be off-grid. I'm really hoping that the boondocking spots aren't packed. And I'm and, excited about the cold weather. Yeah, that's <laughs> the other thing. Gina scouted the weather, and its uh, highs are going to be in the 50s and lows in the 30s. And Gina is a kindred spirit. She also likes the cold weather. So yes, I do. we wouldn't be disappointed if it snowed. No, not at all. So it's onward to our next destination. As Gina and I left the front range, the rain began to fall, and it actually had turned to snow by the time we reached the west end of the Eisenhower Tunnel, although it was only sticking to the grass at that point. We made our way through some gorgeous fall foliage and headed south at Copper towards Leadville and on to Twin Lakes, where the aspens were just gushing with amazing color. I quickly realized that this could be one of the best fall foliage trips I have seen. When we arrived at the reservoir at Twin Lakes, the brooding clouds over the peaks were nothing short of epic, and to top it all off, we scored one of the best boondocking spots in the state. But like any good adventure, this trip is not without its challenges. You'll have to tune in next time to see how we handled some of those challenges that we encountered along the way. If you like this video, it would really be great if you would hit the thumbs up button and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.